I'm here to talk about gossip networks and organizations. And uh, just to give you a little sense of what we do, we founded the Lynx Network Center in the Gatton College. And we go into organizations and study uh, things like gossip, conflict, social exclusion, teams, and teamwork within organizations from a network perspective. And uh, just to give you a sense, most people, when they think about organizations, they view them in this way. They see an organization chart. So this, for example, is a crime lab, and it's got five departments, and you can tell who's in charge of each department and the people answering up to those department leaders. We don't view an organization simply from this perspective. Instead, we might go in and say, all right, uh, each dot here is a person, and uh, who is going to whom for advice? Those are the lines. And the bigger the uh, dot is, the more that that person is engaging in advice trading. Uh, the different colors are different departments. And so when you start to look at an organization in this way, you can see some very interesting things that you couldn't from the organization chart. So for example, here, we still have the person in charge is in the center, but we can start to do things like say, hey, I noticed that these two departments, they've got folks at the bottom level that are seeking knowledge from each other. Uh, another thing that we might notice is that nominally, this person is actually in the biology department, but they're not hanging out with their folks and seeking knowledge from them. Instead, they're in a different department. I wonder if they're in the right department or if maybe there needs to be more communication across those departments. And we can also see that whereas other departments are only connected into the top, uh, other department leaders are talking amongst themselves. So we can get a much richer understanding of what's actually happening in the workplace by taking a network perspective. And we go into a lot of organizations and do this kind of analysis. In a particular organization we walked into, we walked in there and they said, you need to study the gossip that's flying around this place. So uh, we went in there and tried to understand who are, who are they talking about when they're gossiping with each other, as well as who is they gossiping with. So a uh, little similar to rumor, except that rumors are about specific things. Here we're talking about when you're talking about somebody else that's not there. Uh, they told us that it was really important in this organization to understand the gossip networks because it really told you who was influential in the place, how things got done. So this is an actual organization and the gossip network. Every dot is a human being. The lines say that they are gossiping with each other. And just by looking at a network map like this, you can first off see that there's really two big chunks to this gossip network. There are these folks down here who are gossiping with each other, and these folks up here who are gossiping with each other. And then there's a little bit uh, of the anomaly, the new guy up there. We call that an isolate. This poor guy hadn't even been there that long, knew nothing of what was going on and you can see uh, him off to the side there. We can also see some interesting things like um, there are these four people right here that are in a particular structural situation where if we took out these two gossip ties, the entire organization now breaks into two. So we look for those people that are in the bridging situations within a network and realize that they're actually kind of powerful people. They're controlling the flow of gossip between different parts of the organization. Uh, so what we found, we've been doing this kind of research since then on a number of organizations, both in the US as well as in Europe. And uh, one of the things that we know is that Nearly everybody gossips, so when we ask, about 96% of folks fess up to the fact that they're gossiping. Uh, we assume the other 4% are like that poor guy that was out there uh, that hadn't been around long enough to gossip. Um, one of the things we often get asked about is uh, about gender and gossip, and we found that men and women tend to gossip 
at about the same level with about equal number of partners, but men don't refer to it as gossip per se. Um, instead, they have more colorful phrases for what they're doing, but it amounts to the same thing. They're still gossiping, it just uh, happens a little differently. Most gossip, surprisingly, in organizations is actually positive or neutral. And uh, people often leap immediately to thinking about negative gossip, but that's actually a very small minority of the gossiping that goes on. And, and most of the time, you're just inf information exchanging. And it's kind of like watching primates grooming each other. You're just giving information to somebody else about somebody else in the normal course of going through your day. Uh, there are times, though, where there is negative gossip that does go around. And uh, clearly, we find that very interesting. So we like to study uh, positive and neutral gossip separate from that negative gossip. One of the things that we know is that the manner in which positive and negative gossip spread through the network tends to be different. So positive gossip spreads more freely among friends and acquaintances. It gets around very, very quickly. Negative gossip tends to more slowly get around. And what you see is that it spreads usually among very tight friends and especially within small cliques that are tightly bound. So to go back to that network diagram, here we have, you can see a dense cluster, a small clique of people. Uh, if there's negative gossip that's going to be going around, it'll be in, within that area that you tend to see it. Uh, who are the frequent gossipers? Again, it could be either men or women. So the stereotype of, of women as the frequent gossipers is just that, it's a stereotype. Um, those folks that are frequent gossipers tend to be viewed by other people at their level of the organization as being very influential. Uh, but supervisors tend to give them lower performance ratings. Uh, so this is without regard to whether they're spreading negative gossip or not. Uh, and one of the things that we come away with is this, uh, is this realization that the supervisors see gossip and assume that it's negative, that it's subversive, uh, versus it actually being, say, positive or neutral. And when we collect this network information, what's interesting is that we're not just asking uh, one person what are they saying, we're asking everybody else around them to report on what people are saying. So you're getting this from both perspectives. So who are the most frequent gossipers? Well, ironically, it's actually managers. Uh, and if you think about it, it makes sense. They're, they're reason for being is understanding what's going on in the organization and trying to shape what happens within the organization. So they need to have uh, a vital tie into the organizational grapevine. And you tend to see that they're the ones that are at the very center of the gossip networks. Who gets gossiped about? Um, gossip tends to be fairly local. So people are gossiping about other folks that are within their work group. Positive gossip is pretty evenly distributed around the organization. But negative gossip tends to be very targeted. So there are often a few people that are being gossiped about negatively within organizations. And they tend to be the folks who are relative isolates. So if we were, again, to go back to this diagram, these people who are out here that are not as well connected, they're the ones that tend to be negatively gossiped about. And in some ways, you can almost view it as uh, maybe bullying, um, certainly exclusion that's going on. Um, and they're very vulnerable because they tend not to be tied in and have a lot of allies throughout the network. Uh, so negative gossiping behavior looks very much like bullying and exclusion. And those people are very much at risk to leaving the organization. So in conclusion, um, we know that gossip in organizations is ubiquitous. Everybody's doing it. And it's perfectly natural for that to be happening. But remember that while you're uh, 
the people at your own level see it as a good thing. The people above are looking at it as a subversive activity and one that they're going to punish you for. So you want to try to avoid doing it around them so maybe they don't notice it. Keep it quiet. Uh, if I were to give you advice, it would be to keep your gossiping on the positive side but even if you're spreading positive gossip, don't do it in front of the supervisor. Keep it surreptitious. Uh, certainly keep it off of social media. Uh, there you not only put it out in public, but you're leaving a trace for everybody to see forever. So keep it off of there. And then only do it with the people that you very much trust. Thanks very much, and I invite anybody that's interested in social network research of this type to uh, go to the Link Center website, which is linkcenter.org, and you can see all the different kinds of research that we're engaged in within the Link Center. Thank you.